Uh, we're putting the beat down on some invasives, as we're all well aware. Uh, we got about 50 acres, a few different areas. Everybody should have the maps sent to them that show the, the zones. Most importantly, Onyx for that outer guy, whoever you are, if we're like tying into a property line. Help remind everyone as we're like starting these pushes, trackers, it gets easy to forget to stop it and turn it back on. So if in doubt, probably just leave it running. So great vines. On that note, whoever's doing vines, we're not gonna be herbiciding the stumps, but it's super important that that bottom cut you make comes in probably 12 inches to zero, you know, effectively, or four to 12 inch. And you need to make a second cut that's gonna be probably over waist height, put about three feet in between those two. That's just in case we get them sprouting up off the stump. I mean, they will grab back to each other. That's something worth mentioning. Um, obviously the deer are gonna be crushing it. He, this guy's not doing any additional logging anytime soon. So he's doing some TSI. A lot of that, he's not even gonna herbicide those trees. He wants them to re-sprout for deer. And there's still gonna be a canopy, so they're not gonna go crazy. It has everybody's basil sprayed here, right? Time of year, it's a little funky. We got tree of heaven, that's a little hard to kill. The rose is pretty damn easy to kill. If you get in on the stem of any good sized rose clump, you don't even have to come up that high, I don't think, on rose. I mean, I've seen, no matter what time of year, it's extremely effective. But on your average rose stumps, I mean, zero to four, four inch range, come up on those things. Tree of heaven, Ben, maybe you can offer some thoughts on exactly when we encounter those. We have those sort of in patches, but, and when someone sees those, definitely call it out because as you guys know, that stuff likes to grow in little groves. And once you find one, it's extremely helpful to like just stop and try to track down that little patch. We're probably gonna use a little bit lower percentage overall on our basil mix, just because we're trying to cover so much area, it's expensive. With that, you have to get high enough on the stems of all this stuff. If you're treating a tree of heaven that's this big or something, I'd say come up 16, 20 inches. Oh, at least, yeah. And the other thing with basil spraying, you, everyone knows this, you have to get 360 degrees around the stem all the way up. And I would prefer that when you're spraying it, try to get just enough on there where you'll almost start to see it like kind of running down a little bit. Don't just like mist it, but make sure you put enough on there that you, I, that's the rule of thumb, thumb I see. You start to see a little bit of, you know, it's wet, it's coming down, you know you got it. Especially on the tree of heaven. Japanese barberry. I don't know if you guys, that's kind of a weird one. We don't deal with that all the time. Um, if you see them in the first pass, just call them out to each other too. Whatever's in there. Yeah, just yeah. like see what you're seeing. So then yep. you get your eye for it. Couple other safety call outs. When you're up hanging out with the group, so everybody make sure you have some kind of clear safety glasses on the entire time. Unless you're stopping to get something out of your eye, put the thing down, walk away. We've now officially seen everything that can go wrong and just make sure you're wearing these anytime you're near a sprayer. That even includes like that sitting right there. Sun hits that all day long and at lunch we're standing here all of a sudden pfft, mm -hmm. like just keep these stupid things on unless you are nowhere around any kind of sprayer. The landowner shared a folder with me of these down tree structures, which everyone knows what those are generally, but it's gonna be within his woods, pockets of low quality trees that he's gonna be putting a stack of them on. He's gonna have the pin to those and he'll call them out. But when we get into those zones, go over them a little bit more thoroughly. Try to get most of the, all the rows in those pockets. They're small, like 30, 30 by, 50. by 50. But yeah, just do like 10th acre, quarter acre. Okay, again, he's gonna be just dropping everything. So within there, we wanna get all the invasives, pretty much whittle it down pole or sapling size beech and maple. That's gonna pretty much cover it. Anything beyond that, he'll be in there cutting. So there's maybe some black gum. He's gonna cut that, just let it re-sprout. But those softwoods, the, the shade tolerant mid-story stuff, we're just gonna basil spray that. So when he goes in there to do the TSI and drop these trees in there, he can just throw a bomb in there, know that everything's already been prepped. So we're gonna prep those for him. Obviously they're gonna get more sunlight. They're gonna get just disturbed and smacked on the ground. We don't want those turn into invasive thickets whatsoever, or just jack strawed trees creating pressure and tension. Like Ben said, that small little footprint, we're gonna kind of do a little more thorough. And, um, and you, so, you are going to, with the dozer, you're going, you're going to hit this edge? Yeah, so we got a couple spots where we got to basically do a little micro field reclaim back in there with the dozer out all aided up, and then absolutely any extra time, we're gonna come down these field edges and yeah, we can like push in spots like that. Yeah. So run the guy that's furthest up, closest to the edge, just picture that about 10 to 12 feet back in there. Treat the backside. See how there's like the tree edge, but then there's the brush under it. About ride that tree line. Like, I don't even need to like rip those out. If I can just crush that down, we can come back and do a quad quad check but like down there on the edge keith there's a good one to zoom in on that's the kind of stuff we're going to try to crush with the dozer just get in there push it out rip it up get it down to a safer height to spray later
as you, so just focus price start up here today. Then if you had to come back, these are going to be yeah, we come back another day easy, easier, easily manageable. Plus, yeah. yep. And if you get bored and you want to switch it up, or you're getting tired from just going, we can switch it up. However, all right, just wrapped up the morning meeting. Justin's headed over the hill. He's got the electric chainsaw, cutting some grapevines, spraying teams, getting ready to head in and do their first push. They got their area all laid out. They're just going to be basically in a single file line, pushing through the unit. Bulldozer's going to be here in just a second. Ben and I are going to be dropping over into a different area, opening up an old reverted field and knocking out a bunch of huge autumn olives. So Ben and I will be working in unison there. We'll see you guys in just a second on the other side of the hill. It's middle of the day now. Larry's got the dozer out. He's been ripping around for a little bit. Ben was down here helping him clear out and I just subbed in with him. We started off the morning on a couple different units. We've been doing just basil spraying and then Larry's been running this dozer on the much heavier sections. With that dozer, it's way more efficient to push through a lot of these way heavier sections. When we had the group of five guys doing the basil pass, we were selectively hitting autumn olive shrubs and a couple other species that are on the equip specs for this property. But in here, as you can probably see, it's extremely dense and it's way more efficient and effective for Larry on the dozer to push through here and then have everyone follow up with spray, essentially just stump treating what Larry is knocking out. That dozer is also able to push really large shrubs, the big autumn olive in here, up out of the ground and completely remove that root system. This right here is a huge autumn olive. This is the main shrub that we're taking out of this area. There's a lot of rows here as well, but as far as the large shrub components, autumn olive is the big one. Larry just pushed into this section. This is somewhat of a little meadow and it had been completely choked out by autumn olive. So that dozer is able to come in here, push everything out of the way, remove the roots from the ground and immediately remove all that debris from the site. It's an easy way to just completely expose this site. Whereas if you come in here and spray it, there's gonna be more standing dead debris. It's gonna fall on its own. It's just gonna look different. And while the dozer does make a huge disturbance, it can still be pretty selective. Right here is a giant elderberry, native shrub. Larry was able to push around it. This thing's got all the space in the world to just explode now. And we'll be able to just follow up, hit all the stumps that Larry didn't knock out of the ground with the same spray that we're using for basil spray. And then in the coming years, as we're doing follow-up treatments in here, it's just more accessible with the trails and the brunt of the work is done on the front end. I'm gonna hop in here, get some shots of Larry ripping around on the dozer and then probably hop back in on the action pretty soon. Made it. Everyone's here. Yeah, one Woo. step. <laughs> Start with headlamps now. Good day, bro. Yeah. Kicked some butt today, I think. We yeah. got probably 40-ish acres covered. Justin went around, hammered grapevines. The rest of us grabbed basil sprayers. Keith and Larry jumped on the dozer for a while, smashed stuff, and we covered a lot of ground. Yeah. Mainly targeted autumn olive and tree of heaven. A little bit of multiflora rose and we'll come back with the leaves on and hit it with the foliar spray I'm pretty you. excited awesome job i'd, I'd like the record to show that he actually went through at least nine miles of grapevine wow <laughs> really his track was, his track was nine miles plus that might be a record it was 26 acres i did that's okay. sick and one shed about our answer, yeah, two sheds he found two sheds yeah. no kidding yeah. nice i thought i saw one literally go under the desert track and i was <laughs> like well <laughs> Now it's several. <laughs> yeah. Thanks everyone for being safe. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Showing up. Where they came, so.